Rumors are already swirling as the Phoenix offseason is just a couple of weeks old around Kevin Durant. On today's episode of Locked On Suns, how much of this is real? How much should we actually buy into it? And how much of this is that KD is an easy punching bag? We'll break it down. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past seven seasons, a host of the Just Basketball Show, wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for making Locked On Suns your first listen to kick off the new week. Happy Monday. Welcome to the show, wherever you're finding us. Hit follow or subscribe. Get a new episode in your feed every Monday through Friday. We are free and available everywhere, including YouTube. So just hit that button, become an everyday, or get locked on to the Phoenix Suns all off-season long. As we are about to hit on, the rumors are already flying. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, joining us as he does every single Monday is Brandon Duane. Yes, he's a writer over at Bright Side of the Sun. And Brandon, um, a coach was hired and fired since the last time we recorded. And there's already a connection to KD uh, here that came from Kendrick Perkins on ESPN over the weekend, where Perk basically said, I believe in a hit on Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt, that um, KD had not spoken to Vogel, I think the time that he said was three months. I will preface this by saying I think this was a lot more offhanded by 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 Perk than it's being made out to be. Just if you listen to it and watch the clip, I really did not get the impression he was like, "Let me pull out my cal- my calendar." Okay, the last day that KD spoke with Vogel was this day, three months minus six. Like that wasn't really what it was. But big picture, how much of Durant's season, Durant's performance, Durant's comfort with all of this, do you think went into Vogel getting fired and maybe even Budenholzer getting hired? Where, where do you think KD slots in? Yeah, I think Kendrick Perkins just, uh, anytime you get a guy on mic, he's going to talk and his stories, you don't know if they're sourced or if it's just him kind of rambling. And, and that specific rant, I feel like it was more him just exaggerating to make a point than it was like him yeah. factually, like you said, pulling out the calendar and like going through an actual legitimate source. So to me, it's just Perkins talking. And, and Duran is, like you said, a little bit of an easy target just when it comes to ratings and just trying to make those, uh, you know, with all the blockbuster trades he's been a part of and big moves he's been a part of, it's it's easy to kind of latch onto that and place the blame on him. But I'm sure uh, and any like time you hire a new coach, it's not just going to come down to one player. Like I think the chances are just based off some of those reports that it was multiple guys in that locker room that just – weren't all in on the situation. And, and if, that's, if that's the case, then I think you got to roll with uh, making the tough call and, and, and moving on from Vogel as they did and bringing in a guy that I think is uh, has a chance to do a great job as long as the players buy in. That's that's really what it comes down to. So do, do I think Durant was the, the sole reason? No, but um, I think he was certainly a factor in, in the decision-making and uh, you know, you're damn right that th- they definitely talked to him and, and Booker about the that before making any any call. Well, that's what's interesting, right? Is like I there's a few things that I believe about the star player coach dynamic because it's come up a lot with KD and LeBron this this offseason already so far. I don't think players give the you know like the Get, you know, kill him sign to get these coaches fired. But I do think if a player, a star player, a player that has a voice in an organization doesn't want a coach fired, that probably could save the coach. So I don't think that they're the ones making the final decision to fire them, but I do think if they wanted them around, they probably would stay around. Unless you're LeBron. I'm not even sure with LeBron, to be honest with you. I mean, you like, I don't know. I, I think... I think any reasonable front office would be able to read the signs. If you're doing your job, I'm not saying that KD's relationship with Vogel, KD's relationship with any previous coach, LeBron's relationship with any previous coach, Booker, whoever, doesn't play a part 
in the decision. All I'm saying is like, if Rob Polinka or if James Jones or if Matt Ishby or if Jeannie Buss are doing their jobs, they should know it before they even need to be told it, right? That's kind of where, where I'm going is like, if Vogel and Durant didn't have a good relationship, I don't think they needed to have a meeting with Durant to, to find that out. And so hmm. I would agree with you that it, that it probably was talked about in some way, but I guess I wonder then if how much, I guess like I don't think Booker and Durant have any kind of pre-existing love fest with Mike Budenholzer, right? Or relationship of any kind. So that also kind of leads me to believe that this isn't just being decided upon by the players. Like you heard Chauncey Billups' name come up, I think for a reason. I think that was probably coming from Billups' camp or the players' agents, you know, Book's agent, Katie's agent, whatever. And that that probably would have made sense, but I don't think Budenholzer is that kind of hire. So it, it does set a strange beginning to this new Budenholzer chapter of like, well, he wasn't their pick either. So he has a a big responsibility to figure out what it's going to take to connect with them. Because I agree, that's that's going to be what decides how, how good he is in this role. Yeah, and look, he, he's a basketball junkie. Like, not not to say Vogel isn't, but this guy is just a sicko, as as Redick would say. Like, I, I think him, Book, and Durant. Like, it doesn't matter if it's he's their their pick. Um, I think it's more like they'll have that mutual respect just based off that alone. Like, the dude loves basketball. He loves, you know. I think they'll hit it off on that sense right away. The personality stuff and just the off court relationship sometimes uh, gets. I feel like a little carried away like it doesn't matter as much obviously you want it to be a positive one but i think just from a pure like x's and o's standpoint i think it's it's a good fit just from that standpoint just alone because that's I, why I, i'm the most optimistic to be honest yeah. is that i think what he wants to do fits the personnel better mm -hmm. but i mean and he also beat both of them in 2021 right i mean book yeah. and kd probably both feel like they should have won the, that year's championship and they did not so mm -hmm. you know i'm sure that that goes a long way but I don't know. I, I think I think it's easier said than done to kind of earn that, right? Like, I mean, you even think like beyond this LeBron or KD this year or anything like that, it's like Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson or whatever, right? Like Michael didn't choose Phil Jackson. He had probably no idea. I mean, I know he was an assistant on the team before, but like, you know, I'm sure he didn't know how he would be as a head coach. It was his first time. But that doesn't work unless they form a good relationship, right? And so... It has to happen, but it has to kind of be organic. And I think that's probably part of why it's so hard. And this coaching hiring stuff is so teams fail at it so much. It, it, yeah. You really can't know it until it just, you try it. Yeah. And that, like you said, just that, that leaked report about Vogel, just like uh, the players like scoffing or like rolling their eyes at him, yelling in the locker room. To me, that feels like what you just said is like, it has to be organic. His it just felt a little forced just based off that story alone. And just some of the other stuff, um, just the, obviously there's so much stuff behind the, the scenes that we don't see. So it's easy to like pick on, on those things and say like, the, like make these absolute statements that could, couldn't be further from the truth possibly. Like there could be a lot of stuff that's between the lines that we don't even know about. Um, and I'm sure there is, but I think if, uh, you know, the, just bringing on a new hire in general, there's always going to be that learning curve. But I think, initially there, there will be that respect because yes, he beat them in, in the same year. And, uh, like I said, basketball junkie, he's, he's dealt with managing stars. And I think the best part about him is that, like, he's developed suit, like very good teams around guards that aren't super traditional point guards, right? Like there's been teams that I think he's done a good job of finding that balance in the offense. And I think that's where Phoenix could really use uh, a little bit of a jolt. So um, I'm, I'm just excited to see what he does and personnel wise too. I think there's going to be a lot of changes around the edges and, uh, we'll just have to see how everything goes. It's a cool mix to where I think coaches can get pigeonholed, right? Like I think yeah. last year Vogel, what you would have made the case for him with was to say, oh, well he just coached a team like this. And that was even before Bill came, but with AD and LeBron in LA. So, of course, he can do it here. It was kind of like the idea. On the other hand, Budenholzer has never had a team like this. But I think, you know, there's no real reason to believe he can't do well, of course, with, like, more top-end talent. Of course, he should be able to coach that well. But I'm sure it'll be kind of a fun, new 
blend for him because he comes from San Antonio. Then in Atlanta, it's like, oh, we're kind of going to just build it the same exact way. Jeff Teague's our Tony Parker and Al Horford's our Tim Duncan and blah, blah, blah. And then Milwaukee, obviously Giannis is, is a great top in town, but it was kind of just a one, one star show there. And you kind of saw the same balance. And so for him to get the opportunity to say, wow, like, okay, yes, I'm going to bring the same philosophies, but what happens when I have these three dudes to, to execute it? That's a cool mix. So I think he'll have to change. They'll have to change, but they all bring, you know, a pedigree to the situation that I think you have to feel good about. But I, I mean, I think everybody in the Valley is on the same page. It, it's going to require humility, sacrifice, buy-in, all, all those words in order to really work. It can kind of work. It kind of worked this yeah. year. They won 49 games. But for it to really, really work, it kind of just has to click, I think. But uh, mm -hmm. back to Perk, you and I are on the same page. Let's go to another rumor that has come up from at least in NBA circles, an even less reliable source, but an even more salacious rumor. It's funny how that tends to go hand in hand. Chad Johnson on the Nightcap podcast, which is a very good show, but you know, not usually reporting heavy, said that he heard from KD and was told by KD it was okay to say this on air, that he would be fine going to the Heat if it all worked out, or some sort of quote like that. Are we already on KD Trade Watch, or is this just more nonsense? We'll break it down next. First, today's show brought to you by Prize Picks. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as you and the world's. Sorry. Turning $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and college entries today at Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. It's what I love about prize picks. You can mix and match across sports. You're also not playing in a league or a pool or a head to head thing. It's not a game with a person. It is you versus the prize picks player projection. So if you have a hunch that, hey, Caitlin Clark coming up, her debut, you want to get in on that fun, probably going to go over on, I would say, assists more often even than points. So go more assists for Caitlin Clark. Mix it with somebody in the NBA, somebody in the NHL, in the playoffs, whatever you want. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types all combined to make Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Download the app today. Use the code Locked On NBA when you make your first deposit to get it matched up to one hundred dollars. Go to the Prize Picks app, make your first deposit. Use the code Locked On NBA when you do it. Get a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, let's keep it rolling. So, Brandon Chad Johnson, formerly Chad Ochocinco, said that. He he lives in Miami, so let's preface that, that way. Apparently, they, him and Katie were discussing the off season or life or whatever over uh, the Miami Grand Prix, and he heard that Katie would be okay with going to the Heat if it all worked out. I think was kind of the general the general quote there. Um, it's weird, I will say, that this came out the way that it did given that if they are friends and chad johnson's not right he probably just lost a friend and kind of burned a dude who as we were just talking about tends to be in the headlines for this without any help and chad johnson's giving fuel to that fire so that leads me to believe like something was discussed i don't know what but i don't think this is nothing what do you think it is look i, I don't know how close the friends they are uh, by any means but like you said if if it's not true, then that's that's burning a bridge for just uh, for a Content. podcast, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just um, so that's interesting strategy there if that's the case. But I also look at like the timing of it. Was it before? It was before Vogel. Um, so I think maybe KD said, "Yeah, throw, throw us out there." Like it's it's not coming from me, but I mean, he kind of did make it sound like it was coming from him. <laughs> so that's that's the only problem with it where it doesn't feel like one of those strategic leaks. So it, it's really tough for me to like buy into it too much. But I think. Yeah, um, sure. It just sounds like two friends kind of just, just discussing stuff. And, and look, Suns fans, I, I don't think Kevin Durant's going anywhere, but at this point you look at the track record, it kind of speaks for itself. Like it wouldn't be shocking if the same thing he did at Brooklyn happened here. And before that golden state and like I'm, at this point, it just kind of, uh, it would be, we, you'd be a little bit naive, naive to like 
think anything's set in stone. So there's no guarantee he's coming back, but I feel pretty good about it. I think he's obviously frustrated like everyone is, and he wants some changes to be made. So it's just probably just some blowing off some steam with a friend, you know, just, yeah. just having fun, having a little fun conversation. And I don't, th- I'm not looking into it too much. Like not going to fire up the trade machine or anything anytime. Soon. I'm not going to believe the heat aspect of it in, in specific, because again, mm-hmm. you know, you could easily imagine how that conversation plays out. Hey, would you ever want to play here? Yeah, man, maybe if it, if it ever worked out, Oh really? You know, and then it becomes a thing, but also it could be a, maybe KD was discussing it in the context of like, I'm, I mean, he's going to be a free agent in a couple of years. Yeah. Maybe I could come here and sign, you know, not, yes, I might bet I might get traded there in a month, you know? So there's a million ways it could have played out, but I think you're right to say that we can't be positive of anything. I mean, I think that's true of any NBA superstar that has a frustrating playoff exit in the 2020s or even, you know, let's say the last like 15 years in the NBA. But I guess I will say, though, that to be fair to Durant, he had never requested a trade until he left Brooklyn. And even when he did that, he went back for half a season. So the other times he left, it might have been messy in Golden State and there was the whole, you know, press conference melodrama every night after games with him for the last half of that last season. But at the same time, he only ever asked for a trade once. So I I don't think he's as much of a flight risk as, as some people could be. And the other point I've heard made about this that leads me to kind of think like, we'll know if, if, and when it ever were to be real, Brandon is if you think back to the summer of 2020, Two when he first made that request. Crazy that it's been like two years um, already. But you heard it from Chris Haynes. You heard it from Adrian Wojnarowski. You know, it was big news. Like they they knew what there. He might not have like a traditional agent and you know be part of Clutch or CAA or anything like that. But they want to get news out there. They'll get news out there. I don't think they need to give it to Chad Johnson. Exactly. That's that's where it comes back. I think it's just one of those things. Just content a b durant is just a hot topic at this point as the suns are welcome to that like i mean even when they're bad even when they're bad like we saw devin booker in trade rumors almost every week it was just segments nba yeah exactly so i again i'm I'm not looking into it too much and but at at the same time like you said like the the durant he's only really truly requested a trade once but at that at the same time it was almost. It was a very similar situation. To this where Brooklyn fans were kind of thinking, "There's no way he's going to do this." He just signed an extension. He's with his best friends. All this, like, mm-hmm. le- but there's a lot of context leading up to it that I think is different now than then. And I'd be, I'd be pretty shocked if he was not on the floor opening night as a Phoenix on. Like, I would be very shocked. I just, I can't see it happening unless there's something we don't know about in the background. That's because here's the thing. Away. Like, I mean, the reality of of where it is is first of all i have to always take the victory lap i called it in may of 2022 that this that that was going to happen i didn't think it'd be the suns but i did there was a new york daily news article that came out that planted those seeds people kind of glossed over it because again same conversation we were having so you're totally right like nets fans were like no way this is just it's just off season goofing around like you know we just we all need content mm-hmm. people get paid to write articles you got to come up with something to talk about and i was like okay but this kind of does make sense and then uh, never really let it go. Never really let it go after the you know boardroom uh, image press release and all that stuff. So again, that all lines up with we would know though, right? And and it would be more than Chad Johnson. But I think the thing he has to be probably a reckoning with as a as a player right now though too is like he is not like a living breathing championship appearance anymore like he might have been at one point in 2016 when he went to the finals he's not the surefire i arrive and everything is about me and i'm good enough to take you to where you want to go which is even what he was with the torn achilles when he got to brooklyn he's not really that guy anymore and neither is lebron and neither is steph and and that that generation is just in their mid-30s now i don't think any of those guys are operating the way they may have in the past so 
even if he has some of those thoughts in his head, there's much more of a consideration, I think, now of like, is wherever I would go and whatever they would have to give up to get me going to be a better situation than Phoenix with Book, with Kate, with with Beal, with an owner who's going to spend, with an owner who's going to switch out these coaches if, if it's not working out and tell me that a seventh grader that I might draft in 2031 doesn't matter verbally, publicly, and, and be so all in on every single thing. Like, I mean, maybe there's a better situation. Miami's a great place to play basketball, and it, it, they they all are always all in too. But, you know, what's the trade and who are you going to play with and whatever, you know? So I think it's just a different consideration than he has had before. Plus, back to the media side of it, like, it, I do get, like, every year more and more annoyed at how lazy uh, this NBA chatter is this time of year. It's just like a mad lib of team that constantly makes moves player that has jumped around kind of just create a segment around like a guessing game and it, it's just like it, it's meaningless it's lazy it's boring but it, it's just everywhere this time of year you can't avoid it and so i'm sure you know like hey nightcap was probably like what do we want to do you want to just kind of combine and do some of that and okay great well there, there we are figured it out there's our segment yeah, that's, uh, I mean, as much as I, I love the NBA offseason, I think it's outside of pl- like playoff basketball, they're just one of the most fascinating parts about the sport itself is just th- th- the transactions, sure. the rumors, the trades, sure. all that. But when it comes to the chatter, yes, it's just so old and tired at this point. It's so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take that with the fun of the offseason. That's the trade off, like just having to block out that noise. But then when it actually impacts like players to where they're, getting annoyed with these narratives that they can't control. And it's, it's gotta be more frustrating for them than anyone, because I'm sure Durant's seen some of this stuff and just rolling his eyes and just, uh, just as a player, like, I just can't imagine just some of the stuff that they see that they're just like, Oh, that's news to me. Like, but I'm yeah, sure they're, they're just, probably used to it at this point. Yeah. I mean, it is fun. And it, it look, the NBA is crazy enough that it has earned the reputation of like, you can talk that way about it and kind of get away with it. And it's really not that far fetched, but at the same time, it's like, well, Trey young, for instance, could really be on the move. Jimmy Butler could really be on the move, Paul George, but that doesn't get the same attention as having Kevin Durant on the screen when you're talking about this stuff and combining him in with every, any rumor you, you can cook up. So it's just that part of it that, that bothers me the laziness of it. But all right, let's talk about the extension that Kevin Durant is eligible for, which is the most concrete thing we know is actually on the table, actually real, and actually could lead to some difficult conversations between the Suns and KD. We'll do that coming up next. First, today's show brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook. It's winner take all time in the NBA and the NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets, with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks straight to your account. This time of year, there's nothing better. Spreads, money lines, player props, more. All based on one win. That's it. You got to just find one. It doesn't have to be some hot shot, long shot bet. It can just be, hey, find a great odds, put a little money down, put five bucks down, and then get to work with those bonus bets to really reel it in. You have on Monday night, Boston at Cleveland, Boston minus 335 favorites. I feel like that series might have been, you know, game two might have been a blip. Get in on that one. If the Pacers-Knicks result from Sunday is any indication, that result might be a little wonky uh, in the Pacers' favor going forward. They're plus 112. So NBA playoffs, tons to get into. NHL, you got baseball, plenty across the sports world. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get on the action. Make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Brandon, let's close it out. So this is from, I'll say Brian Windhorst was the first one. He's always good on the, you know, extension stuff over at ESPN. He was the first one that kind of made me start thinking about this. The details here are from Bobby Marks in his off-season uh, preview, which it's paywalled, but I would recommend people check out if they're looking for an overview I'll do one probably on the show, but hey, you know, get get there early. KD has two years left on his contract. He's eligible to sign a one-year extension. So this upcoming season will be $51.2 million. 
The season after that will be 54.7 million. But because he will turn 38 in the 2026-2027 season, that's why he can only get one more year tacked onto his current contract. That extra year, if the Suns were to offer it, the max that he could get is 59.7 million. So I'll just ask it flat out. Do you think that happens this off season? Do you think the Suns come to the table and say, we'll give you 60 million when you're 38? Do you think KD locks that in? Where do you think this is, this is headed? I am going to lean no. Um, and it's going to be more of Durant's camp, just wanting that flexibility of being able to choose where he, he ends up at the end of this contract. So I feel like at, like having flexibility is, I mean, once you've made as much money as guys like Durant or LeBron or Steph, that they don't, it's not like it's going to kill them if, you know, if something did happen and he didn't have that security. So I think having the flexibility to maybe go somewhere else on his own terms, like you said, without that team having to trade the farm for, for him and uh, waste the assets to get him. And we don't know what he looks like at that age anyway. So I think um, for him to have that flexibility, that's kind of where I lean towards no. Um, but again, if, if the Suns offer it, and I, which I think they probably will, um, just anytime you have someone that that caliber, that doesn't seem like he's slowing down anytime soon. Like obviously there's a couple things he he isn't as good at as he used to be, but I still think he's an incredible player. And anytime you have someone of his caliber, you got to try to keep him there as long as possible. So um, I'm going to lean no, but I don't know. What, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, so there's a lot that goes into it. I think KD, if, if he, I'll start with, if he had not had the season that he just did from a health standpoint, I think he would feel a lot differently. But because he just played so many games and was able to get through the season and, you know, maybe wasn't, we didn't feel like at his physical peak in the playoffs, you know, the defense he was facing probably had a lot to do with that and he was still very productive. That has to put some wind in his sails to say, you know, if as long as dudes aren't falling on me, I'm good, <laughs> which has been what happened the two years before that. Jimmy Butler and Bruce Brown just knocked into him and sprained his MCL. That didn't happen this year. And he was more than comfortable, played a ton of minutes, played a ton of games. So that could lead him in the direction that you just said of, you know, yes, I'll be 38 then, but I have a pretty decent, basically the calculus has to be, okay, $60 million guaranteed as this extension year when I'm 38, or I'll hit free agency that year. And can I get $60 million total in new salary so that wouldn't have to be a 60 million dollar deal that would just have to he could get a two-year 30 million dollar deal which would be way under market for him but as long as somebody's willing to give him two years he can make that money back that that's probably really what what it will come down to there's no reason on the player's side to like have any sort of show of good faith with the team that it's more the team that needs to worry about that side of it placating and you know being on good terms with your star players as for if the Suns will would offer it I think really what it will come down to is if they feel desperate enough that they just have to keep him happy. I don't think we're there, so I don't think it'll be that. I think it'll be more of a of an apron consideration. Um, you know, that they're already going to be, if they're on, in the second apron, the day that next offseason starts in 2025, that is when picks will start to get frozen. And more and more hammers just get brought down and you have to get out of the the apron for those things to be removed for you to get your picks back as tradable assets and to not have to pick at the end of the first round all that kind of stuff so if the suns see a light at the end of the tunnel if maybe beal were to eventually get traded or something like that or really just the contracts ease up overall you know that year we're talking about Nurkic's money finally comes off the books. Right now, only Beal, Booker, and Nasir Little are on the books. So they're not going to have cap space, but they'll be out of the tax by then. They could get out of the tax uh, or out of the apron, at least, even in the summer of 2025. So I know I'm throwing a lot out there, but I think those are the things that the Suns would be thinking about. And so it's not a sure thing to me that they would offer it. I, that That's the part that I think maybe we differ on is I think the Suns are going to, even though we feel like they're just going to spend into infinity, 
I do think they have to be a little bit careful with this CBA and and giving him that year when they don't really need to. That could do that could do them in in the future. So I think they they might not yeah. want to offer it. And I think that's why Windhorse brought it up is like, hey, if they don't offer it, it can go from just a formality to kind of an fu. True. Yeah, that's that's a good call. And I think just with the whole second apron in general, it's just hilarious that in typical Suns fashion, the the second they get someone that doesn't care about it and spending and going all out on every just investment possible, that this is when it comes into fruition. So uh, having to deal with all this, that's definitely going to be a factor. Any any financial move they make, I think, going forward, um, it's not about being cheap. It's about being smart, especially with some of the penalties that you alluded to. So um, that's that's a good call. I could see them definitely giving it a lot of thought just because of that. But at the same time, like you said, does it, if it's a mutual, like, no, we're not doing this, then is, are there any feelings hurt or is it more just, yeah, you know, you're, we're just trying to keep our flexibility just like you are. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll, after and, the season. And it's, it's similar to like, if people were paying attention to what Pat Riley said about Jimmy Butler's extension, there, it's in the same realm with where the Suns and, and KD are because mm-hmm. Butler has two years left on his contract as well. And what Pat Riley said is, we could do it this summer. We're not really inclined to. We could also just do it next summer, you know? And that's where the Suns are too. They don't have to extend him right now. It's just the first moment where they are allowed to because there's now only two years left on his contract, which is when that becomes available as an option. So the Suns could say, hey, you know, let's just see how this offseason plays out. We don't know what we're doing with Nurkic. We just signed Grayson Allen to this thing. You know, we'll see how you guys all fit together. Maybe they wouldn't say this to him, but in the back of their minds, we're not sure if Brad's going to be around forever, you know, and let's just take it one more season. Be, we'd love to talk to you next summer about an extension, and we'd be happy to offer it then. You know, and then, I, I, I don't know. That's, I feel like if you're both being adults about it, I think that could be a compromise. But again, you never know. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot uh, just contract wise that they kind of did this to themselves a little bit, but it's it's also just the new reality of the NBA. So I think they're kind of going to be that whatever, however they pivot or what they do long term is going to be like the example of this is what this team did in this situation because it's the first time we're really facing it. So it's kind of it's cool in a way. Uh, <laughs> For outsiders, we're living the history books. Yeah. Exactly. So for outsiders looking yeah. at it, it's it's probably not like fascinating as like a case study of like how is this going to actually work out. We're not going to know anytime soon, but it, it will. It's unfolding currently, so it's <laughs> it's we'll uh, yeah we'll see. We get to we get to be the guinea pigs, I guess, here in the valley. Uh, <laughs> we'll take it. You know, sure. If you can't be anything, be interesting. I guess is is a fine philosophy to have. But yeah, a lot a lot really, even though. Some of the nonsense out there might not be super real. There is a lot, you know, an aging superstar who came here via trade and the way this roster is built, like nothing is for sure. Nothing is is guaranteed. Nothing's locked in. So you can't ignore it fully, especially with that extension looming there. But I would agree. I think the most likely is that Durant is, is the starting power forward for the Suns on. October, whatever opening night. I, I think that's until we hear otherwise, you have to just assume that and until there's something more concrete to stand on. That'll wrap us up for the day. More to come throughout the week. Probably a Coach Bud introductory press conference coming up and much more to sift through as that all is finalized. Hit follow or subscribe to get that show, those shows all week in your feed. If you have not already, read Brandon and the crew over at Bright Side of the Sun, and we'll catch you guys next time.